There is a place, a National Historic Landmark right here in Pittsburgh, that I always tell people to visit when they're looking for less conventional recommendations. The Cary Blast Furnaces are kind of hard to describe. They are huge and imposing and rusty, but there's still so much humanity literally riveted into the place. And it's one of the last pieces we have that really shows our city's history as a steel-making giant. And when you go, you are not just going to stand there. You can take their industrial tour and learn all about iron making, the workers who helped build America and the culture that developed around them. Or you can learn about graffiti and art, taste whiskey, or hear about how these manufacturing centers were impacted by the Great Migration. I really can't recommend these tours enough. Learn more at riversofsteel.com slash tours. Yens, there is so much going on in the world right now. And sometimes I just need to be a pure Pisces and let the magic of it all take over for a minute. That's why I am excited to check out Meant to Be. It's this new show at Liberty Magic downtown with the magician and entertainer Hennick. He specializes in offering personalized mysteries. If you haven't been to Liberty Magic yet, get on it. It's this incredible speakeasy theater located on the very same block where Houdini once performed for Pittsburgh near the turn of the century. It's like a perfect setting for a mystery show. Get your tickets at trustarts.org slash magic before they disappear. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, a local teacher was left out of the U.S.-Russia prisoner swap, and he is not doing well with that. A new kind of vending machine is popping up across the county, and there are two new sober spaces to watch out for here in Pittsburgh. Plus, the vice presidential circus is coming back to Pennsylvania. It's Tuesday, August 6th. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm with CityCast producer Sophia Lowe. Good morning. Hello, Megan. <laughs> so today, Sophia and I are doing sort of a grab bag of recent news, quicker updates, stuff that's caught our eye, and we hope Yins might appreciate. Let's get into it. First up, some more vice presidential drama. VP drama. Uh, so late Friday afternoon, Philadelphia Mayor Sherelle Parker put out a very big video. It felt big in the moment when I saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it encouraged people to support Kamala Harris as the presidential candidate. Makes sense. But it also talked about vice presidential candidate Josh Shapiro. Yeah, that was really weird. I saw this video like 20 minutes after logging off work. And so naturally, I decided to finish my Mario Kart tournament before looking into this further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that tracks. And <laughs> I think the jerk that triggered the looking at Slack after work hours at that point. Um... That's OK. It could have been big <laughs> news, but it's not at least yet. Yeah. And the tweet that went out, it's gone now. Uh, it was pinned to Mayor Parker's profile for like hours and then it got deleted. Did you get a chance to see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did see the video before it was deleted. But, you know, there was no big vice presidential pick uh, announcement yeah. right after. The Philadelphia Inquirer uh, talked to an anonymous source who wasn't affiliated with the campaign, just someone who's close to the mayor. But that person said it was just Parker showing support for Shapiro as the potential vice president pick. There was nothing that felt potential about it. Like, it was just such a produced video and it had this, like, build up and then it said vice president. Like, it felt like the kind of <laughs> yeah. thing that you produce, you have ready, and then you schedule to publish after an announcement is made. But maybe instead of scheduling it, they accidentally posted it. Like, I don't buy that this was, like, ambiguous. To me, nothing about that video felt ambiguous. My first reaction was also someone goofed and posted this video early. Like, Vice President Josh Shapiro sounds pretty definitive. Mm -hmm. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to use, like, Vice President and just say it's showing support. Yeah, but there's been national reporting since, of course, that all of the people in contention for vice president have met with Kamala Harris over the weekend. And at least as of this recording, there's still no confirmation on whether it's Pennsylvania Governor Shapiro or anyone else. 
Yeah, and things may have changed by the time this hits your ears because Harris is holding a rally in Philly today with her running mate. We are keeping tabs on this and we'll probably be talking about this later this week. I'm sure if Shapiro ends up being the pick, that'll probably come up again. Yeah, yeah. And of course, in other vice presidential candidate news, J.D. Vance is also coming to Philly today. Uh, So a big day for the other side of the state. Y'all can keep them all. We don't want the traffic. (laughs) Well, coming back to Pittsburgh, we heard from the Pittsburgh area teacher who was left out of the prisoner exchange with Russia earlier this week. Yeah, I know y'all talked about that just a little bit on our Friday show. You know, it happened right as you were recording. If you missed it, Mark Fogel is from Butler, most recently lived in Oakmont. Um, He was a teacher. He taught diplomats kids and he was arrested on his way back into Russia in 2021. Mm -hmm. He was sentenced the next year to 14 years in prison, all for cannabis possession. Um, He had a legal prescription here in Pennsylvania. And so the State Department announced this huge swap, including Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. Mark Fogel's family has been advocating for a really long time, but he still wasn't on this list. Yeah. And I know y'all weren't able to get into it Friday, um, but we included a lot more details in our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. Um, Part of the reason that Mark may have been excluded is because he technically isn't listed as wrongfully detained. So that's an official label, like a distinction that the State Department can apply. And it would elevate his case and make him eligible for help like what Mm -hmm. Evan got and many others. So the Senate, led in part by Democrat Bob Casey, passed a bipartisan resolution to support him getting that distinction in June to officially declare him wrongfully detained. But Secretary of State Anthony Blinken hasn't done it yet. Fogel's mom, Malphine, has even sued Blinken for failing to do it. His mom has been working so hard to bring him home. And the Trib right now has a story uh, they wrote using a 20 minute recording. This is a recording of a phone call between Mark and his family. It is so sad. He said he's been in bed for days, can't wrap his head around why he'd be left behind while others are being saved. And he says, quote, I just feel like my soul is dead. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to wrap your head around it. This is the third exchange that the U.S. has negotiated since Mark was arrested. Um, So it's his third time watching this take place, and he has not been rescued. WNBA star Brittany Griner was another. She was also arrested for cannabis possession to treat pain. This week, she's in the Olympics, and Fogel is still in Russian jail. And for anyone who wants to say anything about taking cannabis into Russia, Mark's family has maintained he was following the rules to the letter, that he'd had a diplomat's passport and was clear to take his medications, but that distinction got changed. So he had to check into customs when he arrived. And Mark was on his way to do that in the airport when he was arrested. Yeah. If you haven't checked it out yet, I really recommend the Trib story that's up right now. We'll have it in the show notes. It is gut-wrenching, but also really important to read. Hey, Yins. One of my favorite parties of the entire year, Arborade, is coming up so soon. It's Dree Pittsburgh's annual fundraiser, and it has got everything. Local cider, live music, a squirrel mascot, and they are known for homemade pierogi and an unparalleled cookie table. Plus, last year, they had these forest-themed boozy giveaways. It was amazing. 10 out of 10, no notes. If you want to hang with us by the Allegheny River in Lawrenceville and support an amazing cause, get your tickets now. It's Saturday, September 14th, and just know everything you give helps increase our tree canopy here and ensures our neighbors have access to trees and all of the amazing benefits that they provide. So come party with me. And pro tip, bring an instrument this year. I'm not kidding. Visit treepittsburgh.org to get your tickets today. The land down under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline. So you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. All right, Sophia, what has been on your mind lately? 
Narcan vending machines. Uh, here in Allegheny County, we'll be getting some more free vending machines that'll have Narcan in them. So I'm glad that we'll have more resources available to prevent fatal overdoses. Yeah, I actually did not know that we had these at all. Like I saw headlines about how we're getting more and I was surprised to learn that they already existed. Yeah. So there's a vending machine in the South Side, another one in Brookline. The latest edition is one in McKeesport. And then four more of these vending machines are going to go up around the county in the next few weeks. I saw some reporting that said the one on the South Side was empty, like within hours of going up, which is kind of impressive. Uh, I guess all of this is being run through the county health department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, even if you're not familiar with how to use Narcan, the vending machines themselves sort of explain it. And then on the sides, they've got contact information for support and recovery services, a form where you can request Narcan from the county health department because the county health department also gives it away, like outside Mm -hmm. of these vending machines. So lots of good information like that. Yeah, yeah. And the thing I saw somewhere was that, you know, the county health department was like, sometimes people just don't want to go through the extra step of calling us. So this Mm -hmm. way they can get it and their own time in different neighborhoods, whatever. Prevention Point Pittsburgh also has Narcan in its injection form and they have a nasal spray. They pop up in different parts of the city on different days. They have the exact locations on their website, but you can find their mobile van, for example, in East Liberty on Sundays. They do Perry Hilltop on Tuesdays, the Hill District on Wednesdays, Mm -hmm. Carrick Overbrook Thursdays, and then Homewood on Fridays. Like just the logistics alone, they're doing the Lord's work. They really are. And it's not limited to Narcan. Prevention Point also has clean needles, alcohol wipes, test strips for fentanyl, just all sorts of harm reduction tools. They also have a video on their website about how to administer Narcan. Also incredibly Mm -hmm. important that people know how to use these overdose prevention tools. So we'll also link that in the show notes. And worth maybe picking some up if you're in any of these spaces or you just think there's even a, a hint of a chance you might run across somebody in distress. Having it on you is the way to save somebody's life. Oh, absolutely. And we'll wrap up with a fun update from Stage AE. Uh, They recently introduced an alcohol and drug-free space in the concert venue. It is their sober sanctuary. Yeah, we wrote a little bit about this um, also in our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. Don't sleep on the newsletter. One of the sponsors is the nonprofit Jade Wellness Center. And one of the people there explained that some people are just uncomfortable going to spaces like Stage AE and that this will make it more inclusive overall because like it doesn't all have to be like bar focused. Exactly. Connection, one of the Narcan vending machines we talked about just a second ago is outside the Jade Wellness Center's Southside location. So I love that they're also connected to the sober space. Right. And you don't need a special ticket or anything to get into the sober sanctuary. Anyone can get into it. You just have to find this area that's like sectioned off um, when you get to your event. Oh, good. Easy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Whenever we talk about non-alcoholic beverages, of course, I always think about the open road. They've been in Allentown for years now, but they're moving over to a new location in Garfield. Way more space. Uh, and I think that'll give them probably the opportunity to add that bar to their shop that owner Mel has been talking about for ages. Amazing. And also more space means more treats. That's going to be hard for me because I always want to get everything in the shop. I was about to say that is very close to you. That is in the danger zone now. <laughs> Well, I'm excited. Regardless, my wallet will be less excited. That's okay. (laughs) When are they making the move? The Pittsburgh Business Times uh, says they want to have the shop open sometime in the fall and then maybe have the bar up and running by the end of the year. So to me, that reads as all fully functional up and running in time for dry January. Oh, good timing. And if you want to familiarize yourself with the non-alcoholic products before, the Open Roads website is super comprehensive. I occasionally browse for fun, honestly. Uh, (laughs) They also do delivery. Yeah, we did an episode once where we visited the space, uh, gosh, about a year ago now. I am usually a fan of the canned mocktails myself. I like their white and rosé wines. But there is this whole brand of drinks called functional beverages that Mel explained, too. Those were new to me at the time. Um, But they're just booming in terms of flavors and creativity. And Mel seems to know everything. Just a fantastic guide for whatever you want to try. Just wander in and say, this is what I'm looking for. And they will help you. They're so good. I actually really like the functional beverages. I'm pretty sure what I drink is 
falling into this category. Quote unquote functional. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like I like these Odyssey brand caffeinated drinks. They've got like mushrooms in them, like lion's mane, the focus ones, not the psychedelic kind. <laughs> yeah. And I feel maybe it's just the caffeine, but I feel like I get really locked in once I drink one. I mean, I just love how creative this whole market is right now. And I'm so glad and grateful for folks like Mel to bring it to the Pittsburgh space. There mm-hmm. just isn't a lot of places to find stuff like this. It really is a specialty store in the best way. Yeah. If you are sober, though, just note that some of their drinks have THC and CBD in them. So I know some people are alcohol free only, but if THC is also something you avoid, let them know because the staff there is so helpful and can direct you to exactly what you're looking for. Like you said, Megan. Yeah, yeah. And the website, too, just one more resource, has this really long list of places that serve NA drinks around Pittsburgh. It's just like great to be able to pop onto that if, you know, for whatever reason you are not taking in alcohol right now. They really keep tabs on all the menus. It's great. Mm -hmm. And then they have a partnership, too, with Two Phrase Brewery and Garfield. So I think that's the first Monday of every month at the brewery is all NA service. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. And Two Phrase does tend to have like non-alcoholic beer offerings. Uh, at any time too all the time yeah yeah pittsburgh i feel like has really been stepping up its game with non-alcoholic uh, events there's also the teetotal initiative um so that's a group that has sober events and meetups and in august they've got things like sound healing and yoga yeah if you want to hear about cool events like those remember to subscribe to our hey pittsburgh newsletter we are in your inbox every day at 6 a.m That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. Reminder, you can find all of our shows, old and new, plus tons of events on our website. That's pittsburgh.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. I haven't spoken to real humans. Like I've been doing so much typing, but I haven't actually talked to anybody today.